everybody. This is Pamela. And this is Tracy. And we are here to discuss how business really works. Today, we're going to talk about your voice being recorded. It's really important nowadays that you're comfortable with that. Whether you're creating a course, a podcast, you're creating some sort of audio or video for like, say, Facebook Live or Snapchat, you need to be comfortable and confident having your voice recorded. Now, this is something Pamela's a pro at, and she helps me a lot. So Pamela is going to go over some of her techniques that she uses to help people learn to get really comfortable with their recorded voice. So Pamela, what is your first piece of advice? Well, first of all, Tracy, thank you for the kind words. I have put in a lot of time and educated myself on this, both through my acting training and just on my own. So I like to think that I know a little bit about this subject, and hopefully we're going to help our listeners sound more natural when they record podcasts. And actually, we're going to have another episode where we cover on-camera presence as well. So look out for that one in the future. But right now, we're going to talk about when you are recording your voice, nobody can see you. So there's two big principles that I want you to keep in mind. One of them is that you need to be relaxed. I know this sounds probably a little bit obvious, but easier said than done for many, many people. And the problem is that either on camera or in a podcast, if you are tensed up, you will sound more robotic, you'll sound unnatural, you'll sound uncomfortable. I'm not going to go into relaxation techniques specifically because there are so many of those and we could do, you know, a whole mini series of episodes on how to relax. So I didn't really want to spend a lot of time on specific techniques for that in this episode. If you have a relaxation technique that works for you, use it. Use it before you record so that by the time you're recording, you feel good, you feel relaxed, you feel natural. The second principle that I want you to keep in mind during this episode is that if you write a script, if you have notes for your podcast, don't think of the script as a mandate. You don't have to read it word for word. Nobody is going to be looking over your shoulder and is going to slap your wrists with a ruler if you get a word wrong. If you approach your script as a mandate, then you're going to be focused on the wrong things. What you want to be focused on is the message, not the words. So as long as you're sending the message that you intend to send, then the script is just your guide. Use it when you need to remember the next thing to say. Use it when there's an important point that you don't want to miss, but don't ever feel like you have to read word for word. That will sound very robotic and very unnatural. I agree. And I've noticed that even in our podcast, because one of the things we do quite often is we'll do a quote or a piece of research information. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that when we actually read that, the tone of our voice changes a little bit. Yes. Even though we don't mean for it to. Yes. It just happens. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah. I want to ask you about one. Okay. It's one that I struggle with a lot and you've helped me a good bit, given me some exercises to do. I have this really strong Southern accent, if nobody's figured that out yet. And I have <laughs> You to, do? Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I know. It's a shock, isn't it? I have to work really hard on diction and enunciating my words. Mm -hmm. So, Pamela, explain your exercise on doing that. It really helps a lot. Okay. Actually, I'm going to explain two exercises. I thought of another one before we started recording. Um, so I'll start with that one because it's really quick and easy. Say a tongue twister over and over and over again, like Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A tongue twister that has all the same sound, whether it's a P sound or a B sound or a G sound. Use tongue twisters that involve different parts of your mouth. So use a tongue twister that has the G sound G in it a lot. Use a tongue twister that has the P sound in it P a lot so that you're using the front and the back of your mouth. You can find these tongue twisters all over the internet. Just Google. <laughs> I'll find some links for people and put them in the show notes for this, but I encourage you to go out and Google and find these tongue twisters and before you record, say it 10 times, 20 times, and do both of them, the front and the back of your mouth before you record and that'll help with your diction. Another exercise and the one that Tracy is referring to is an exercise I learned in acting class. Actually, it was in a Shakespeare class. As you're probably aware, Shakespeare is a very unique form of dialogue, and it's not natural for most people in this day and age, of course, to speak like this. So 
one of the exercises that we would do to warm up our mouths and be able to actually get those words out of our mouths without tripping over our tongues is we would take a straw and we would snip off about a quarter of an inch off the end of the straw. So just a very, very small snip of the straw. And then you hold that upright in between your upper front teeth and your lower front teeth. So you're holding this little snippet of straw in your mouth and then you just start speaking. Say sentences, speak to your loved one, your partner, your dog, parents, call a friend with this thing in your mouth and have a conversation with them. It really doesn't matter. You could even just bring up a web page and read everything that's on the web page. The point is that you need to speak for probably five minutes or so on end with this little thing in your mouth and it will force your mouth to widen and it will force your lips to really enunciate because you've got this obstacle in the way. You know, they tell Olympic athletes to, if they're like weightlifters or anything, they train with heavier weights than they will compete with. Um, They overtrain their bodies so that when the time comes to actually do the competition, they can handle not only the competition of the weight and then some. And it's the same principle here. You want to train your mouth to open up wide and really get your lips to enunciate the words. By the time you get to recording, enunciating your words properly will feel much more natural. So those are two exercises you can try, and I guarantee those will help you a lot. Pam told me one time I didn't have a straw available. She said, just stick your pen in your mouth, where, you know, like it sticks out long ways. Mm-hmm. You know how you'll do when you're writing and you stick your pen in your mouth and do something with your hands? Yeah. She said, just stick that pen in your mouth. It'll accomplish the same thing. Yes. If you're going to use a pen or a pencil, hold it in your mouth so that the length of the pen or pencil is sticking out of your face, straight out of your face, because you just want that little thing that you can catch in your teeth. That's the most important thing. You don't want the rest of the pencil in there because that kind of defeats the purpose of the exercise. But Tracy's exactly right. You can also use a pen or whatever is available that is about that size. All right. Well, let's talk about my big nemesis. And you know exactly what that is. I do. (laughs) One time I was sitting next to Tracy and we were having a conversation and all of a sudden I felt a slap in my face. (laughs) That's because Tracy likes to talk with her hands. And on camera that can get in the way but actually it's a good thing when you're recording a podcast i am talking with my hands right now as we as we record this podcast the advice that i want to give to you is if you have a naturally animated way of speaking don't stifle that for a podcast again on camera is totally different and we will go into that in our next episode but for the purposes of a podcast Nobody can see you, so it doesn't matter if you're standing up, running around. I mean, you don't want to get out of breath, but, you know, jumping up and down, doing sit-ups, talking with your hands, whatever. Be as animated as you want to be while not making yourself get out of breath because that'll help your energy, and that's what we want. Since people can't see you, all they have to go on is your voice, and if your voice is dull, if it's low energy, if you're just you don't know what you're saying and you're stifling your speech a lot or whatever it is if you have a low energy way of delivering your words people are going to tune you out so you want to make sure your energy is high and it stays high throughout the whole recording so whatever you have to do physically do it nobody's watching you i mean i don't know your neighbor might see you through your window but (laughs) that's that's a different problem altogether but just to make sure that you keep your vocal energy up and that will keep your audience engaged Unfortunately, I don't notice it as much while I'm recording, but then I hear it afterwards when I listen. If I'm like the least bit tired, Mm -hmm. I have a tendency to speak more out of my chest and my voice gets a little bit gravelly. Yeah. Then when I'm full of energy, it comes from you deep down inside and it's a full, more robust voice. So I have started making sure I get up and I move around a good bit before I record I have to do that I don't know that everybody has to do that but I have to make sure that my physical energy level is up and if I'm going to record sitting then I am on the end of the chair it's not tension it's not anything like that it's just well one I'm going to be moving my hands around right now because like it's a miracle I haven't slapped the microphone at this point (laughs) but it's just more of an energy level you know if you're in a private conversation with somebody You know, you're at your house, you're having a conversation. If you're sunk back in the couch, 
You speak differently than you do if you're really engaged with that person and you sit up on the end of the couch. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean tension. It means energy. So think about that too. Think about your energy levels before you start recording. Absolutely. That's a good point. And let me further state that I'm here talking to Tracy right now. I feel really jazzed about this topic and I feel like my energy is high. I'm I'm sitting, but I'm sitting on the edge of my chair so that I have to actively hold myself up. <laughs> and I feel like my energy is super high. When I go back and listen to this later, I'm going to edit this probably tomorrow or over the weekend. I'm going to ask myself, man, I felt so energetic, but this sounds less than what I felt. I still should sound energetic. It still should sound fine and it'll be great for a podcast, but you think your energy is higher sometimes than it actually turns out to be when you listen to the final product. So just keep that in mind that you almost want to overshoot that energy a little bit. And that's something that I still work on too. I'm naturally kind of a lower energy person. I really have to push myself to have the high energy that I want to have when we're recording these podcasts and when I do my videos. What you think may be high energy because it feels high energy to you may not actually be high energy when you listen to yourself back. So just keep that in mind too. If you're naturally a high energy person, like a Gary Vaynerchuk or something, then you have no problem at all. And I would not suggest pushing yourself further. But for the rest of us, you might just think about pushing yourself a little bit further than what you're comfortable with. Yeah, and I've noticed if I stand up, it helps my energy. And I think that goes back to the fact that I have training in public speaking Mm. that I naturally project my voice more and I have more energy if I'm standing. So when it's possible, I will actually stand and do the podcast. Sounds kind of dumb because there is no audience here watching me, but it energizes me because of past training. Mm -hmm. So you might want to try that. You might find you're more energetic on your feet, but then of course don't do like I do on stage and pace and walk back and forth. Got to stay right in front of that microphone. Yeah. All right, Pam, I want to go back to the idea of a script a little bit more. I think a lot of people are uncomfortable winging it. And in most cases, we don't want to hear the average person wing it. Pam and I are working with a script of sorts. We never script anything out for word for word. What we do is we say we want to make these points. And so there's these points we cover. And if we want to quote somebody or we want to give you like some research material, that sort of thing, then we will read that. But how important is it to practice ahead of time? How important is it to more or less know what you're going to say and internalize it than it is to have a script? I know it varies for each person, but my personal slash professional opinion is that it's more important to know what points you're going to make, regardless of how detailed you script out your points there have been episodes where I have literally sent a list of bullet points to Tracy here's what we're going to talk about for the episodes that I planned out for this episode my notes were a little bit more full but I'm not reading from them right now I look down I grab the points that I want to make and make sure I'm covering everything but I'm not reading from the script itself right now I think a script is important. Writing down your thoughts will definitely help you solidify and organize those thoughts. So I definitely recommend doing that. Um, But like I said earlier, the script is not a mandate. It's more important to cover your points in your own natural voice and in your own personality than be reading from a script. And, you know, if you're actually reading from a script, unless you're holding it up right in front of your face, Mm -hmm. if you're looking down at the table or whatever... That's going to cause your voice to drop also. Yeah. Now, what you may want to do with your notes or your script before you record is to read the whole thing out loud once. I definitely suggest that. And if you want to read it word for word, fine. This is just an exercise to get the words out of your mouth so that you're saying the words, you are expressing your thoughts and expressing your points before you actually record. The practice exercise is to help the words come out of your mouth and solidify your thoughts. Well, I know if I'm the one that's deciding kind of what our topic is going to be for the day, I have a tendency probably to do more detail. Not because I'm ever going to make use of it, but because 
it helps me think through the process. That comes from being a writer and public speaking. And when you do public speaking to a degree, you have a tendency to write out more of a script, even though you never follow it. You know from receiving stuff from me, sometimes it's you think I'm going to, well, she's going to sit and read this. <laughs> but I don't. It's just part of my getting all that organized in my brain. Yes. So don't say that we're telling you not to write it out because if writing it out helps you get all your thought processes lined up and you know what your points are going to be, mm-hmm. then go through that process. We're just saying don't read it when you start recording. Yeah, we don't want you to sound like a robot. We want you to sound like a person. Exactly. And an exercise that you can do, speaking of your script and making it sound natural, is when you are ready to record, and I've kind of alluded to this already, but let me just state it outright. When you're ready to record and you have your notes or your script in front of you, train yourself to look up and away from those notes. Maybe you want to do this a few times actually before you record. So you're holding your notes in front of your face, Read a little bit from the notes and then look up and make the rest of your point to the wall or to a mirror or to a chair. Just train yourself to look up and away from your script or your notes. When people speak in conversation, in normal conversation, they look around. They look at the person they're talking to. They look around the room. Their head is constantly up and forward. And that's the kind of energy we want you to have when you're recording your podcast. Another good exercise you can do I would suggest recording yourself in conversation with a friend. I would not suggest doing this on the phone because you need to really record both sides of the conversation so that you can hear how you deliver and how you respond to the other person. So get together with a friend, invite them over for coffee or wine. (laughs) Not too much wine because we don't want you to be trashed when you're doing this. And hit the record button on your phone or on your laptop and just record yourselves having your normal conversation. The things that you want to pay attention to are the speed at which you talk, tone of voice. You also want to pay attention to whether you pause, how often you pause, and how long you pause for. And a very common problem that I see when people record themselves or are aware of being recorded is that they tend to slow their voice way, way down. They speak in this very slow, deliberate, almost teacher-like voice, I want to say. Especially in the acting world, I see this all the time, is that when people are more starting out and they're not used to being natural on camera or in a recording, they will slow their speech way, way down. They take pauses and they speak very deliberately, and they are very almost walking on eggshells when they're speaking. Normal people don't talk that way. (laughs) Not usually, anyway, unless there's a reason for it. But in normal conversation, just like I am now, people say the words, they get them out of their mouths, and they move on. So be cognizant of not slowing yourself down so much when you're recording. Again, it's a very common problem, easy to fix, but you need to be aware of it. So pay attention to whether you do things like that. And after you've recorded your conversation with your friend, if you've already recorded some podcasts previously, compare that natural conversation to whatever you've recorded already. Just see how they compare in terms of sounding natural, in terms of pausing, in terms of the speed of your speech and all those things. And so you can become aware of any sort of impediments that you may have going on when you're recording Now that you're aware of them, you can work on them. One of the things that people have problems with is keeping their audience engaged. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason you really need to know your points. You need to be succinct in what you're going to say. But there's another really good key for how to keep your audience engaged. So Pam, you want to discuss that? Sure, yeah. This is another thing I learned in acting. Many, many good lessons for you all, our dear listeners, are coming from my acting training today. (laughs) Um, This principle is super important whenever you are recording yourself. I would say this is the number one thing that will help you be more engaging to your audience. And that is to make it personal. If you're talking about something that you have no personal stake in or no experience with, I mean, you might be interested in the subject matter and you might speak eloquently about it, but nothing compares to speaking about a really personal experience that has impacted you, that you have an emotional response to, that you're excited about. 
I mean, I'm excited about talking about this right now because I love acting and I love the training that I've gotten from incredible instructors here in Atlanta who have helped grow me from a terrible, frankly, (laughs) terrible actress when I started out because I didn't know what I was doing. And I just loved the process and I love being on camera. And so I'm naturally excited to be talking about this with you. So don't just give advice in your podcasts because you want to give advice and you want to be the authority. Give advice because it's an issue that you've had personally that has affected you and that you have an emotional investment in. And your audience will see that and they'll hear it in your voice and that will make them pay attention more than anything else. If you have that emotional stake, I won't say the rest falls into place, of course. There are certain techniques that you still need to work on, but it'll make it just that much easier to smooth everything out. One of the things that Pamela and I do when we work on these podcasts, and I know you've seen some of the tapes of us doing the podcast, we visualize talking to a single person sitting across the table from us. So we kind of think of ourselves as like being at the coffee shop. We're having a conversation with one person that needs our help. And I think that helps a lot. That helps you personalize your message. You're more inclined to tell a story, an experience to that one person. You don't want to be talking to an amorphous blob that is your quote unquote audience. That doesn't do anything for you and it doesn't do anything for them. You can't see me right now, but I have a picture in my mind of somebody that I'm talking to and maybe this actual person exists out there somewhere. Maybe they don't, but I'm talking to somebody, not people, not general people. And I find that that is also an extremely effective technique for me to speak normally, for me to speak as if I'm talking to somebody who's sitting right in front of me. When you do that, it's less intimidating for you because now you've just narrowed down your delivery to one person and that one person finds you fascinating. You can imagine them any way you want. They're they're any color, they have any hair color, texture, height, doesn't matter who they are or what they look like. They find you fascinating and you are talking to them and you've got their full attention. So talk to that one person. Don't talk to a general, vague, quote unquote, audience. Don't think of your audience as an audience. Think of them as just a lot of individual persons who want your help. And think about this also. If you are talking to one person, you're going to say you, Mm -hmm. which draws people in once they've kind of like spaced you out. We learned that in public speaking classes is that every once in a while you want to shock the audience a little bit by saying you because it snaps them out of their days. And the other thing is when you're focused on that one person you're talking about, you're going to say you and you're going to ask that person a question. You're kind of going to engage them back into the conversation. And although you're recording a podcast and that person's not actually going to be able to respond to you, you have still drawn that person because mentally they are probably answering your question. So those are a couple of keys to keep your audience engaged, but you need to act like you're talking to one person. A lot of experts will say you need to think about your perfect client. Mm -hmm. We have a tendency just to think of someone that needs our help and they're asking us a question and we're giving them guidance. So to recap, Pamela recommended that you use a relaxation technique to relax before, you know, remove the tension from your body before you start recording. But we also need to keep your energy up. Get up and walk around, sit on the edge of your seat, keep your head up. If you're using a script or notes, just use them as a guideline. You keep the head up, keep the voice engaged, don't let it drop. Some of the Techniques that she recommended, one was to record yourself having just a natural conversation with a friend and compare that to your professionally recorded voice. And also use the straw technique to learn to enunciate and improve your diction. We also recommended that you make your message personal. You include stories and you focus on one person as though you're talking to one person and you're engaging them back with the use of the word you or by asking a question. So what Pamela and I would like to know this week is, are you going to broaden your audience by using the recorded medium? And do you feel like these points we've made here, these exercises we've provided will help you be better at it? We would love to know. So head on over to howbusinessreallyworks.com 
and leave us a message in the comments to this episode or click the contact button and leave us a personal message. We would love to hear from you. Yes, and don't forget to like this episode and share this episode. If you are listening in iTunes, please consider giving us a review. It will help us to get found, and that will help us help more people like you to build their businesses and succeed and be completely natural in their podcasts. (laughs) So thank you for listening. Share, like, give us a review, and we will see you next time. Thanks a lot.